I think that uh, there are historical precedents and ingredients for the Jesus story, but I just don't see evidence of a real historical Jesus like there was, let's say, a historical Caesar Augustus about whom many of these same stories were told. But hi there's a historical figure who has been mythologized. I think Jesus is, is myth and fiction all the way down. Will you take care of me? Throughout eternity Are you a trinity? Or in me? Just semantics Merely politics Another heretic I just wanna know Does Jesus have any real connection with history? Well, uh, without thinking about whether he might have been a myth or not, scholars that figured he was historical have long pointed to uh, the, the slaughter of the innocents with King Herod, uh, the, um, the uh, attempts of Pilate to get Jesus uh, to safety, and uh, the Sanhedrin trial with Caiaphas and Annas. Uh, they, they pointed to these things as historical fictions. They're so implausible, given what we know about these figures, that, uh, th that this destroys all the connections between Jesus and uh, secular history. And in that, if and, and plus some ancients, uh, some Jews and Christians couldn't quite agree on when Jesus lived. Uh, in the Toledo of Yeshu and uh, in uh, the Talmud, there are references to apparently the Christian Jesus living about a hundred years earlier than the Gospels place him, in the time of Alexander, Genias, and so forth. Irenaeus thought Jesus uh, lived to be 50 years old and was crucified under the Emperor Claudius. Uh, and how did they not keep this straight if this was the central figure of uh, the human race? And I think it's, it's much like Superman. Uh, well, a whole lot like Superman. They start out with a, a hum, uh, an adult superhero. Uh, then the comic sells so well they decided, uh, eh, let's say we uh, do another comic, uh, The Adventures of Superman. And when he was a boy, and so the, then you get Superboy, which is just like Jesus, 12-year-old at the temple, and all the infancy gospels. And then uh, DC Comics decided, how about a backup feature of Super Baby? Uh, and uh, the toddler with a little, uh, like the clothes we put our little kids in with a Superman symbol, uh, same thing. And, uh, and then, as time went on, uh, Superman's been around for nearly 80 years, they keep uh, retconning, as they call it, uh, revising the continuity in retrospect. So when did Superman arrive on Earth? Well, uh, it must have been in the, uh, the teens of the 20s, in the beginning of the 20th century. But later on, they have to say, well, let's say he arrived uh, from Krypton in the 50s, because uh, they can't have him actually age. They can't have, I mean, they could get away with it, him, but Jimmy Olsen and Lois and the others uh, can't become old codgers. So they kept revising it. So uh, in, uh, I think it's Superman versus Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne's parents are killed in front of him when he was, uh, he's a young kid, and they just come out of the theater seeing Excalibur, which came out in 1981. I saw it in the theater, then it was only, you know, relative to that. Well, that's what I think happened with Jesus, why they couldn't keep it straight. They had to keep updating him for church political reasons because the bishops wanted to say, yeah, you can trust us and not the, those weirdo heretics because, you see, our guys who ordained us were educated by Jesus himself, and naturally you want that line of succession as short as possible, so Jesus would keep getting advanced in, in uh, the timeline, just like Superman was, though for different reasons. I just want all the evolution, a revolution, do we pass or fail, create a living hell, now that the tale is gone. Euhemerus was one of a number of ancient thinkers who uh, had a loyalty to the traditional myths of the gods and, and divine heroes, but he knew enough to, to, to realize 
you would like you you couldn't have witnessed Hercules going around doing these things, killing the Hydra and all that, like a Steve Reeves movie. He said that nah, didn't happen, and uh, and so what these what you Hamerus did was to say. Uh, there must have been a historical figure at the bottom of this. Hercules must have been an extraordinarily strong guy, and um, Ares, the war god, must have been the storm and Norman of, or the Patton of his day, and um, and uh, Asclepius, the healing god, he must have been like Marcus Welby, and uh, these myths grew up around him. Uh, and Apollo, like I guess he he ran a tanning salon in Athens or something, and uh, and Euhemerus and. Some some others thought this, and this is why you have uh, Herodotus, for instance, musing over when the historical Hercules lived, and he's looking at the different myths and saying, well, in this one, he's uh, with King so-and-so, that would place him about this date. Well, I don't know when he lived, but it was back there sometime. Uh, or um, Plutarch in the second century uh, CE or AD, he says that Osiris and Isis were the king and queen of ancient Egypt, and he he knows there are all sorts of myths about the death and resurrection, and he tells us all this. And he said, but in fact, they were a historic king and queen. Uh, and uh, this whole approach was a way of demythologizing because you, you didn't want to say they were pure fictions. Uh, I and, and it does happen, like I just said with Caesar Augustus, that some people get mythologized, true. But you have to ask, do we know, is there enough uh, non-mythical, uh, enough secular or profane evidence is there a footprint in the historical record. of uh, Jesus is composed of bits and pieces from uh, Josephus' antiquities where he speaks of various messianic and revolutionary figures who, like uh, John of Giscala who cleansed the temple of the Lestoi, the, uh, the thieves uh, in, in the temple, like, you know, you've made my house a den of thieves, and uh, he was welcomed into the city with palm branches and all of that. Or another one, Simon bar Giorus, who declared himself king of the Jews during the Roman siege. and tried to tunnel his way out of the city, but um, had to eventually surface and uh, appeared before the Roman troops in full uh, regalia, and then they carted him off to Rome and he was killed as king of the Jews. The interrogation of, uh, of Jesus in front of the Sanhedrin and then the procurator Pilate, this sounds amazingly like Jesus ben Ananias, uh, a a prophet who for years was predicting that uh, Jerusalem was going to be destroyed and people didn't like the sound of that and so they uh, brought him to the, the Sanhedrin and then they brought him to the Roman procurator, not Pilate, but the uh, uh, later fellow, one of the guys, I think, Cuspius Fadus, or one of these guys, and uh, he uh, interrogated him and Jesus ben Ananias would say nothing and so rather than crucify him, he just flopped him and let it go, let him go, which is what uh, it, Pilate is said to have wanted to have done in the Gospels, but then got bullied into having Jesus crucified. Well, some years later, during the Roman siege, as uh, Jesus Ben Ananias is walking around 
uh, wailing for doom on Jerusalem. He gets killed by a flying uh, boulder uh, from a Roman catapult, and so his prophecy was true, and the Romans took over. This is so, uh, I mean, there are little details, like the procurator says, where are you from? Which is what Pilate asks Jesus and John. It, it looks like that uh, the gospel writers knew Josephus and decided to borrow this. So was there a historical Jesus? It, it's sort of like the Frankenstein monster. Pieces of other guys have been put together, but there was no original Frankenstein monster.